since I laid my burdens down. At this time, we're going to actually remain standing as we go into our scripture for the morning coming out of the book of Psalm. Our scriptures, Psalm 46. The book of Psalms 46. Starting at verse 1, we'll read through the final verse 11, and we ask you to read with us responsibly. Which means that I'll read the first verse, you read the second, I'll read the third, and we'll continue to alternate until we reach the 11th verse, and we'll, we will read that one together. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 46, verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Though the waters thereof roar and, and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams thereof shall it make glad, the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come before the works of the Lord. What dispensation he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Together, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Yes, Lord. We thank the Lord for the reading of his words. And we pray much that it will sink down into the depths of our heart, into our soul. At this time, we're going to actually remain standing. 
if you can. We're going to go in our invocational prayer. Invocational prayer. We want to invoke God, allow him, ask him to come on in and take control of our service, of our lives. And every moment that we live, we want God to be in charge of it. Our invocation. We bring many before the altar. No matter what the problem is, God has the solution. God, as one songwriter said, that Jesus is the answer for the world today. And above him, there is no other because Jesus is the way. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, that call me from a world of care and need me at make all my wants and wish. Yes, no. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Shall we bow our heads? Precious Father, Almighty God, Lord, we thank you again. The blessings that you have sent our way. And Lord, the power that you have displayed to help us through so many incidents. Lord God, we come this morning as a church and a people united with one purpose at heart. Lord God, to serve you and to give you praise. This morning, oh God, this morning right here, God, come into the service. Bless everything that's done and said. Let it be done according to your purpose. Let your will be done. Let your glory be revealed. Touch, heal, deliver, set free, Lord God, and have your way. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. 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 You may be seated. One day, one day, one day, I am going where Jesus is. One day, one, day, one sweet day, one day, I am going where Jesus is. One day, one day, one sweet day, one day, I am going where Jesus is. One day, oh happy day, I am going where Jesus is. Jesus is be gone up to be here. Come on, church, help me sing. One day, one day, oh one day, one day, I am going where Jesus is. One day, one, day, one happy day, I am going where Jesus is. Called up to meet him, called up to meet him. Oh, the joy will be mine when we meet. Let us go Called up to meet him in the end. One day, one happy day, I am going where. Jesus is hallelujah. One day, one day, I am going where Jesus is. Yeah. One day, oh, one day, one day, I am going where Jesus is. Be called up to me him. I'll be all the joy will be mine when we meet. Going up to me him. Oh, by and by, by and by, I am going where. I am going where Jesus is. One time, by and by, I am going where Jesus is. I'll be called. One more time. 
One day, one happy day, I am going where Jesus is. One day, one happy day, I am going where Jesus is. One day, one happy day, I am going where Jesus is. I'll be cornered. to meet him, call up to meet him, all the joy will be mine when we meet him, oh, call up to meet him, meet me here. yes, Lord, one day, somebody in here ought to be happy just to think about the joy the pleasure is going to be to meet him in glory hallelujah we thank the Lord to know that one day things are going to be a whole lot better that sickness that you're going through those sinuses that I suffer with from time to time need Benadryl active fed amen so many other cold medications but when we meet in glory, you can forget all that. Let the church say, forget all that. Because peace, happiness, and perfection is going to be right around us. And God's going to take away all the fears and tears. All the problems are going to be gone. Because he's going to be there to comfort us and to let us know that he's our God. And we are his people. Amen. This morning we want to go into our Amen. Devotional is going to ask a few people to come and help us. Amen. Going to ask uh, Brother Chester, I know you're real busy, but can you help us with devotion this morning? Sister Gloria? Sister Ch Brother Chester? How about you, Sister Serena? Can you help us out? Three people. Well, we have three people here that can sing. And you guys feel free to take charge and let the Lord use you. Amen. Let the Lord use you. This time, our devotional team. Victory is mine. Victory. Victory.
Worthy to 
Until the glory 
judge. He's worthy to be praised. Can I get an amen on that one? He is worthy to be praised. Thank you, devotion leaders. You, God bless you. You stirred our souls for a while here. But we're moving on in the service today. We're going into our benevolent offering. Again, we keep Brother Chester busy. Keep him busy. Amen. That makes him a better man. My dad, when I was growing up, he was so hard on me. I just didn't understand it. I thought the man didn't like me. But he tells me on his deathbed, he know he was hard on me, but he did that to make me a better man. So, Brother Chester, can we make you a better man? <laughs> yes, Lord. Amen. At this time, it's our benevolent offering. This is not our regular offering. This is not the general offering. This is where we give a donation to help those in need, whether it's flowers, a card, candy, or just words of inspiration that we can pay for something, slight donation, something to help out. Amen. Just give whatever you can in this offering. Our general offering will be next. But remember, church giving, as we've always been taught, is not changing the order of service, is not doing something that's not supposed to be done, but giving is a part of worship. Amen. You better be glad you didn't come up in the old time days when they had to go out and find a lamb, a calf, a goat, something to sacrifice. Amen. But your sacrifice is strictly asking for a little bit of money. Not a whole lot. But asking you to bless as God bless you, as God bless us. We want to be able to give back and let him know that we appreciate it. I don't believe anyone's ever lost a dime by putting it in church. Because whatever you give the church, God will certainly give it back to you. Amen. 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 We thank the Lord for what you gave in the offering. And uh, we're going to move on. And our next great event is the announcements and the welcome address. And I believe uh, Mother Shirley Winston, see, she's doing double, Shirley Williams, <laughs> she's doing double duty. Amen. So being a part of refuge, there's a lot of things you can do. To be a part of the kingdom of God, there are many opportunities. And to get the glory of God in your life, to get the blessings, all you got to do is step out and do something. We don't need to just sit still, but to get God's blessings. He's going to give them to you anyway, but you feel so much better when you know that you've stepped out on faith and allowed God to, amen, use you for whatever the purpose, whatever the reason. At this time, we're going to have our announcements from Sister Shirley. Williams, and we're going to ask you to please pay attention because it may be something in there that you really need to hear about. There are events that the church have all the time, and a lot of times folks miss out because they didn't pay attention. We're not going to put it up on the board of downtown Oxford, but it's right here at Refuge. And if you miss it and you didn't hear it clear enough, go back and play Elder David Morton Facebook Live. And you can hear a lot of things that we've talked about during our service. Mother Williams.
it is our hope and prayer and when we depart from this service, we will serve with you and in his faith in the power of God. God is not unmindful of your life struggles. Trust him and he will help you to overcome. And please remember refuge temple is not located in the heart of the city, but it does have a city of heart. And we just want to ask you to continue to pray for all of our Thank the Lord for those announcements and thank the Lord for hearing Mother Williams talk about our students and how they're going to college. They got offers from two schools each. And I, I just want to say recently I had to change my telephone number. I had a 404 area code for 12 years and I finally got rid of that and I got a 919 area code. But the problem was I received a phone number that belonged to somebody else. And this lady who had the number before I got it had baby kids. The school system, Granville County Schools, was calling that number all the time. I couldn't take it. But I say that to say our students, amen, the ones going off to college, we don't get no problems out of them. There's no trouble. Maybe they did one or two things. I don't know. <laughs> but we thank God. I had to change my number because of the problems that those children were having with the school system. But however, yes, Mother. Um, I just want to uh, recognize just a couple of uh, women. Uh, Leah, Leah Hill, and her son were going on. Yes. Uh, they, they Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Here at Refuge, you get more than just the Bible. You learn how to live, and that's what God wants us to do. We got to have the word first, but after the word, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to handle yourself in the community, in the neighborhood? And that's what we want to teach. We want to teach every one of our children to know how to love God and love each other. Amen. Amen. Praise God for those announcements. At this time, we're going to call on Brother Chester again. And this morning, I'm going to ask Brother Albert, will you help us with the offering? Amen. Amen. This is, of course, the fourth Sunday. Uh, on the fourth Sunday, we have the youth that will have an a offering. Every fourth Sunday, the pastor asks that the youth department get a contribution. Uh, on the table is pastor's aid. In the box, of course, that's the tithe box. So your tithe can go in there. And this is, of course, the general offering. All those love offerings of whatever you feel that God has blessed you with, that you can do something extra, come on, put it in there. And watch that seed grow. Watch God bless you because you blessed his people. You blessed his church. Can I get an amen? Yes, Lord. If you need an envelope, if you'll raise your hand, the ushers will be passing those out in just a second. Just raise your hand, you'll get credit. Um, of course, they record the names and the amounts. And If you need a ta tax write-off, there it is. If you want to be a blessing, God bless you. Shall we all stand? Amen. Follow the directions of the ushers. Once they get back, I guess I'm moving a little bit fast.
We're going to have prayer and then we'll ask you to follow the directions of the ushers. So at this time, shall we bow our heads? Precious Father, Almighty God, Lord, we thank you. It's the blessings that you've sent our way. It's the love that you've displayed toward us. And it's being able to know, God, that you're there every moment to help us. Where we're weak, Lord God, you are strong. And you can lift us, you can carry us, and you can take us where we need to go. God, we come to you this morning, bringing back a portion of what thou has given us. And asking you to bless it, Lord, for the furthering of your kingdom, Lord God. That somebody may grow in understanding, may grow financially, spiritually, and physically. We're asking you, Lord, to touch, heal, deliver. In Jesus' name we're praying. Amen. At this time, please follow the direction of the ushers. You'll face the wall and you'll come from the rear. Thank the Lord for what you gave in the offering. Certainly, you will be blessed thereby. At this time, we're moving on in the service, and we're going to ask for Sister Denise if she'll sing a solo for us. But our message of the morning is coming from none other than our pastor, Elder Willie David Morton. He's the man to break the bread of life and to give us further directions from God. We, may we sit prayerfully. May we pray that God will help him, and God will be in him, that God will speak through him. So at this time, we're going to ask Sister Denise if she'll come, and after that, the next voice that you hear will be that of our pastor, Elder Willie David Morton. Can we all say, praise the Lord? Praise the Lord! Elder Morton. My way, 
Lift those hands and give God some praise right now. I feel, I said I feel, I feel like going on. Whew. Those trials may come. I still feel like going on. Oh yeah, every yes I feel, I feel. Oh, oh, 
Hallelujah. Oh, bless his holy name. Can somebody just raise those sanctified hands and give our God a praise in this house? He is worthy. It's because of him that I feel like going on. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We greet you this morning in that wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ. We honor him for his goodness, honor him for his mercy on today. He is a good God, and his name is worthy to be praised, giving honor to not only the Lord Jesus Christ, but to Apostle Wolfall, Command Ella Hunt, Ella Chavis, to Bishop Williams in his absence, to all of the brothers and all the sisters, all of the young people, visitors, to everybody that's in God's house today. We greet you in the name that's above all names, and that name is the Lord Jesus Christ. We do praise and magnify him on this day. Amen. We thank God for blessing us to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. We are Amen. A little short in number today. I've got several calls and texts from people, amen, that were a little under weather. So we ask you to keep them in prayer, amen. Please remember Mother Gill, amen. She texted me this morning and let me know that she was a little under the weather, amen. And we know that Sister Sharon Chavis, amen, just had knee surgery. So please lift her up in prayer, amen, but I'm excited because, amen, I saw her walking around yesterday, so she's doing good, hallelujah, she's recuperating, amen, and there are others, amen, that have suffered with one thing or the other, amen, Sister Sheila sent me a text, amen, so we just praising God for everybody that is not here today, please keep Bishop and Mother Williams in prayer, they're up in New York, Amen, and we're praying that the Lord will bless them to have a wonderful time there and to bring them safely home. I hope Bishop Williams is listening so he can hear me say home. Hallelujah. Amen. We have a lot of fun with him about that. He's a New Yorker by heart, but we are, amen, translating him into a Carolinian. Hallelujah. So we just, I'm not talking about the Tar Heels either, by the way. <laughs> He's already there. Amen. But we just praise God for everything, amen, that he's doing in our life. Amen. So glad to see Sister Brittany back in the house today. Y'all give her a hand. Amen. She's moved back to Old Town, and we are glad to see her in the house today with her son today. We are so glad to see you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Those of you that have your Bible today, if you will, Turn with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 12. The book of Hebrews, chapter number 12. Amen. I think I'm in the right place because the song that Sister Denise just sang kind of fits in with where I'm at today. The Lord moves in mysterious ways. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews, chapter number 12. Beginning at verse number one. The Bible reads. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience. The race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Would you bow your head in a word of prayer? Precious Father, in the wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and for your mercy. You are our God and beside you there is no other. 
We come once again on this day looking to the hills from which come our help, realizing, oh God, that all of our help comes from you. We honor you for being the God of our salvation. There is nobody like unto thee. We ask you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will search every one of our hearts this morning. Father, forgive us for anything that we've done, said, or even thought that was against your will. We need you this morning to put your word deep down on the inside so that we will not sin against thee. Created us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit in your children on today. Now, God, as we come before thy presence, we're asking you to remember all of the sick and the afflicted. Lord, go in that hospital, go in that rest home, go even into that prison camp, and bless your children like only you can. Oh, God, now as we again approach the preaching moment, I'm asking you in Jesus' name that you will allow me to decrease that your anointing might increase. God, do whatever you desire to do, and Lord, use me to say whatever you want said in this house on today. We honor and magnify your adorable name one more time, and we ask you in Jesus' name that thy will be done, that you might get the glory. It is in the matchless name, Lord Jesus Christ, that we pray. Everybody lift your voice and shout hallelujah. One more time, shout hallelujah. Amen. You can have your seat in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to speak to you this morning from the subject, stay in the race until you finish. Stay in the race until you finish. When you think about running a race, even the Bible says that one person gets the prize. So when you are racing, amen, usually you're trying to outrun somebody else. Hallelujah. Even if a person is on the track running by himself, then he's running, amen, challenging time. Amen. He's trying to run the 40 or the 60, the 100, 200, 400, whatever the case may be, and you try and he's trying to do it, amen, in a amount of time that, amen, is going to break the record of somebody else that has did the same thing. Now, one thing that I've learned, amen, in my years of keeping up with athletics is, amen, the way that you run the race and how you finish the race Amen. The way that you run it is determined by what kind of race that you're in. Now, me personally, I've always been a person, and when I was younger, I was pretty fast, amen, but I was only fast for a short distance. Amen. When we used to race and we grew up racing in our neighborhood and whenever we would race anything from 40 to 60 yards, it was very hard for anybody in my neighborhood, amen, to outrun me. But once you got beyond those 60 yards, then the guys with the longer legs, amen, and maybe more wind, I don't know, would always catch me and overtake me. But for those first 60 yards, they were in the dust. Amen. Now, but when it comes to running other races that were longer, like the 100 and the 200, 400, even the 800, even up to miles and two miles, that were ra they were races that I didn't even compete in because I knew I was not going to win those races. Amen. I was not the type of person that could run fast for a long time. Amen. But there were people that knew how to pace themselves. Amen. You know, when you're running a long way, you can't just go out and go flying down the road wide open thinking that you can run a 200 the way that you run a 40 yard dash because as soon as you get a, 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 a x amount of distance down the road you're going to give out a breath your legs are going to get weak and tired and you're going to find yourself slowing down such it is in the kingdom of god when you begin to run this race that leads to our salvation one thing we have to understand is that the bible says here in the book of hebrews that this race we have to run with 
patience. Amen. In other words, it's not a good thing to start out with God and be so wide open running and leaving everybody else behind. You don't have time to let people teach you how to live this life. You don't have time to study God's word. Amen. You just running, running, running. Even I like to sing the song, I'm running for my life. Amen. But I understand and been in this thing long enough to understand that even when you're running, you have to pace yourself. Amen. You have to allow God to lead you and to guide you. The Bible says that they that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. That means that you can't get so holy and sanctified that you think you know more than God do and you're going to just do it the way that you want to do do it. Amen. But you misunderstand it when you're running this race. Amen. You have to be able to do it at God's pace. God has to take things out of us, put things in us, so that we qualify even to stay in this race. Amen. When we're racing in the natural, as I told you before, we're always trying to win the race. We want to be the first one to cross the finish line. But I've found out in this walk with God that this race, amen, victory is not determined by who comes first, but it's determined by whether or not you finish the race. It's like running in the New York Marathon. Amen. Everybody's not going to finish first, but if you run in the New York Marathon, you are successful if you can just cross the finish line. Amen. They give you, amen, a whole lot of accolades just to be able to stay on your feet and endure the pain that you go through in your body just to finish the race when you are running the race of salvation you got to understand hallelujah the reason you're going to need patience is because while you're running this race you're going to be fighting obstacles when people run in natural races it's hard when the wind is blowing against you amen they call it a draft Amen. When you run it into the wind, you're getting, amen, you're getting resistance from the wind that makes you have to put out a little harder to go a little faster. Well, it's no difference in your spiritual walk because when you make up in your mind that I'm going to run this race until the day I die, you got to remember that there's this adversary, amen, called Lucifer, Satan, if you please, and he is our resistance because Satan has already warned us that I'm going to and fro up and down the earth and I'm seeking whom I may devour. Understand what he really wants to do is to keep you from staying in the race. Satan understands that if you hold on to God's unchanging hand and never give up on God in the end you're going to win and because Satan doesn't want you to win what he does is he begins to throw a man fiery dots at you. He begins to throw things in your life that are designed, a man, to take you off course. He wants you to have to go over mountains that you really don't have to go over because the Bible teaches us that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to that mountain and tell it to get the hints. You must understand then that the most important element of running this race is to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ I'm not talking about having faith in the preacher or faith in the deacons and missionaries I'm talking about having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because there are things that I wish I could do to bless every one of you but I don't have that type power but I know somebody by the name of Jesus that said there's nothing too hard for him to do understand my church hallelujah that God loves us in spite of us he loves us when we do good he loves us when we do bad he loves us when we obedient he loves us when we disobedient he loves 
loves us even when we don't deserve to be loved. That's why I don't know about nobody else. But I made up in my mind that come hell or high water, I'm going to stay in the race. I'm going to run this race. And I'm going to run with patience. The Bible says to lay aside all the weight and the sin that can so easily beset us. Now let me tell you something about weight. Sometimes the Lord allows weight to come upon us to get our attention. I hope I'm in the right church. I remember when I was in high school, I was playing basketball and we had back then what were called ankle weights. And what I would do when we were in practice, I would put ankle weights around both of my ankles and I would practice with the weights. But when I took the weights off, guess what? I could jump higher and I could run faster because it felt like I was free. I come to tell somebody that the Lord will put stuff in your life to weight you down so that when he delivers you, you'll find yourself, hallelujah, flying a little higher than you used to fly. That's why the Bible says, lay aside all of that weight and the sin that'll mess you up. You got to be willing, church, to stay in the race. While you in the race, you got to run, but you got to run at God's pace. You can't do it the way that you want to do it. You got to get in the word of God. You got to get down on your knees and talk to God. Hallelujah. My companion was talking to her last night and she said that the Lord told her how can you know the Lord if you don't know his word. You got to know what the word says because the Bible says that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. I want you to understand that in the word of God we got a hiding place when you get in God's word study God's word meditate on God's word when you get in a tight spot the Bible says that the Holy Ghost will bring all things to your remembrance but you will never remember what you have not put in access to your brain you got to see it first before you can remember it you got to know about it first before you can remember it how can you remember not something that you never knew about so you got to make sure that you open up the Bible and read God's word if you get to something that you don't understand you can ask the Lord Lord help me out right here I really don't understand understand what you're trying to say. He that needeth knowledge, all you gotta do is ask God and he'll give it to you. He'll open up your understanding. He'll help you understand why you do this, why you don't do that. We living in a time now when people don't believe God no more. They don't believe that God is coming back. But I come today to tell the refuge, come, I don't care what you think, Jesus is coming back, he's coming back, and I got a feeling it ain't gonna be long, if you look at the condition that this world is in, if you read your Bible, you'll understand that Jesus has got things in order, he said everything is falling in place. It ain't gonna be long before Jesus stepped out on a cloud. The Bible says that the dead in Christ are gonna rise first. Those of us that are alive and remain are gonna be caught up to meet the Lord in the midair. I don't know about nobody else but I don't wanna be left here when the rapture takes place I want to be caught up and get up out of here. Because
cause uh, I'm staying in the race uh, until I finish it uh, it's gonna be finished uh, when Jesus uh, says that it's finished uh, my finish uh, might be different from yours uh, but one thing for sure uh, we all uh, gonna have to answer uh, to the Lord Jesus uh, he got to stand uh, before King Jesus uh, he gonna pay every man uh, according to the deeds uh, that are done in our body so you better be careful while you're running this race you better take off some of that weight while you're running this race you better lay aside all of that sin so you'll be able to rise and walk in the newness of life I come to tell you stay in the race don't let nobody get you off course don't let nobody make you throw in the tower run this race and run it with patience I come to testify that Jesus will lead you Jesus will guide you Jesus will help you your job is to stay in the race In the church world now, you see a lot of competition. Preachers fighting over titles. Hallelujah. Churches trying to outbuild other churches. Preachers taken down from God's standards so that they can fill up the pews because they want to be the winner. They want to be the biggest church, the baddest church most successful church what they fail to realize ain't but one church a lot of congregations a lot of denominations but it ain't but one church and that's God's church and his church is determined by his rules and regulations we got all these different denominations fighting over different doctrines, wasting time because God is going to judge us by his word, not by what our discipline books say. Thy word have I hid in my heart so that I won't sin against him. You got to stay in the race. The Bible said that the race is given to the swift these are the battles to the strong. People go on to quote, but they didn't endure it to the end. Those scriptures are not together. However, they are true. If you expect to make it to glory, you got to stay in the race. While we are in this race, saints, there's going to be one trial after another. Soon as we conquer one thing, Satan got something else to throw our way. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was reading about King David last night. And it amazed me how that this young lad could kill a giant, get favor with the king. King Saul put him over the soldiers. He went out and slayed a bunch of Philistines. When he came back, the Bible said the women start singing a song. Saul has killed thousands. And David has killed, killed ten thousands. And it made Saul mad. Yeah. Hallelujah. That same spirit is still in churches today. People get jealous when God blesses you. 
And if in their mind he bless you more than they bless them, you have a fresh enemy. But the Bible says that David behaved himself wisely. You got to be wise when you're walking with God. Wisdom means that you don't react negatively when people do negative stuff to you. Y'all still with me? We're still talking about staying in the race. Saul got so jealous that he took his javelin and threw it at David trying to kill him. But God was with him. And that is the key to us having a successful race. Make sure that you're running with Jesus as your sidekick. Hallelujah. The Bible says that because Saul knew that the Lord was with David, that he was afraid of David. You know why he was afraid? Because he felt like David was a threat. Because when the women were singing about him killing 10,000, he made the statement, well, what else is left except the kingdom? He was worried that David was going to take over the kingdom. But that stuff was not in David's heart. When I began to read that, I started to understand why God said that David was a man after his own heart because David understood the concept of esteeming others higher than yourself. It amazes me how God can take individuals that others look down on and say it will never be nothing and God can take them, mold them, Strengthen them and make them vessels of honor. You know why he does it? Because they stay in the race. When you stay in the race, you have an appreciation for what God has done for you. And you repay him by obeying his word. Saints, whatever you do, stay in the race. Finish what you started. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says to count up the cost before you even start out. There's a parable in the Bible that talks about how that a nobleman started building a tower but he didn't finish it. And they laughed at him. Don't let Satan laugh at you. Because you started with God. Got discouraged because somebody made you mad. And you gave up on God. Because what somebody else did. Please, whatever you do, stay in the race. Come on, put your hands together. Give God praise, everybody. This... Thing that we call church is at a critical point in our history in my opinion <clears throat> because we live in, in a day now when people are using God's church for the wrong reasons Church is not a place to come for a social gathering just to see who got on what. It's not a place to come, amen, to show off your gifts, to use your gifts to worship God, absolutely. But to outshine somebody else, that's not what God needs. He needs people that are serious about ministry. One of the reasons 
that I feel like God saves us is not just to save us, but also to use us to influence others to be saved also. Do you not know that you could be the one that God has chosen in your family to lead the rest of your family to him? You might be the one that breaks the curse in your family. You could be in a family where there's been years of hatred, disagreement, discord. And through you getting saved and living Christ-like in front of them can change the whole direction of your family circle. If you stay in the race, somebody else in your life might join the race. Somebody give God praise. If you're in the house today and you need prayer for absolutely anything, I believe with all my heart that there's nothing too hard for God. I don't care what you're going through, what your situation is, God can handle it. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. While I'm trying, don't be angry, let me stand. I'll be willing, Lord, to run all the way. Yes, all the way. Yes, all the way.